Something that I observed recently with the new Steam Deck OLED is that the 3.5 millimeter headphone audio jack is kind of noisy. Um, it makes like a buzzing noise or kind of a static noise. Um, it, it's noise that you will be familiar with if you've ever heard coil whine from a computer before. Um, this was never an issue that I had with the original LCD model, and at first I brushed it off as, ah, well, the noise floor is just higher. Uh, but it, it became a disappointment when I realized that I could notice it in quieter moments of games and not just in the menus itself, um, considering that the LCD model, again, didn't have the problem at all, and this is supposed to be the upgraded model of the Steam Deck. Um, given what the noise sounds like, I, I resigned it to a poor board layout, considering that Valve really took a moment to pat themselves on the back for reducing the component count and shuffling around the board. Um, so I just assumed the coil line was from a GPU or <laughs> another component's noise that was just getting in uh, with the board changes that they made. Um, still, I think I'm on the right track, but apparently people online or a few people find that you can fix this by isolating the PCB daughter board from ground. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't really see how this is going to solve the problem, um, considering that what they're doing is they're piping an analog, from what I can tell, an analog signal all the way under here and next to a Wi-Fi? Why would you put an analog audio signal next to an antenna? I know that's probably not affecting it, but it's a long distance to go either way for analog. I think this should be where the digital lies. But anyways, I know that would be a lot more traces. Um, either way, I could kind of rationalize the idea of maybe, like they say there's a ground loop, and so you end up with like a voltage divider from maybe these buttons are sending some sort of noise. I don't know. I'm not really, <laughs> like I say, super well studied on electrical engineering, but I figured we'd give it a try, right? I got the thing apart. It was kind of annoying to take apart because I wanted to take it apart without damaging it or giving any scratches, so it took a lot of time to do it. Um, I'm going to cut here, set up a test where I plug the headphone jack into the line in on my computer, set the volume levels to be as flat as I can, and just try to get your recording sample of what I'm talking about. Uh, and I'll also upload that as well. And we'll see what it sounds like with it screwed in as it is here and with it removed. Um, but yeah, first of all, let me zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. All we're gonna be doing is, I already unscrewed the Wi-Fi adapter and just sort of pried up at it with a, the same spudger I used to go around the edges of the Steam Deck. And I'm gonna use the same hex screwdriver here and unscrew it. Now on the guide, or guide, the two pictures or a couple of pictures that people have uploaded on various social media, um, I think it originated from Reddit, people just unscrew it like that and they'll put like Kapton tape in it. Um, that's not going to isolate you from ground because ground is usually also underneath and I've already done, I've already observed this. And sure enough, if you're trying to isolate something from ground, hold on while I struggle to get this out, I really should just put it here. Let me remove the thing proper for you. There we go, get that out of there. This thing likes to break, it's no, no big deal. It's just a shitty little board there. All right, yeah. As you can see, if we flip this over, but look at that, there's a ground plane all the way along the bottom. So if you just take the screws out, there's a good chance that you still might be grounded. Um, I don't know if I would even recommend doing this long term, um, because if you've ever known anything about the classic ground loop, like if you've ever plugged a guitar into an amplifier and you hear that boot because the 60 hertz from the mains is getting in, well, the grounds are there for your safety. If you're the type of person that plugs in your guitar amp and you remove the ground pin from your guitar amp, well, the whole amp is no longer grounded and could be live. So there's a reason that these grounds are put in place. Um, any sort of stray currents could be, you know, 
making the whole board live. I know it's very small voltages, but it could affect the system itself. Who knows, right? Maybe you get a little static in there or something. It's no longer, that static's no longer going to go straight to ground. So I don't know if long term I would recommend this, but we're going to try it as an experiment and see uh, if it does make a difference. Um, if this really is some sort of ground loop and this is becoming sort of a, a voltage divider for noise in the circuit or something. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to record two different samples of audio from the Steam Deck, so two different states. Um, the first state will be as you see it here. Um, the daughter board for the headphone jack is completely isolated, so it's not screwed in and these grounding planes are not touching anything on the bottom. Um, and this feeds directly into the line in on my computer and the audio levels will be fixed and set the same amount. Amplification will be the same, um, and volume the same on the Steam Deck, of course, as well. So we'll start with that, and we'll do um, the same couple of movements in the menu, and I'll dub over what we hear um, live throughout the recording. So let's power it up, and I'll start the recording. <laughs> So by now, the sound card's probably muted itself, so you're not going to hear any of that coil whine, so that's probably good. I'll pause the recording, and now I will try to do this live. I'll close off the machine, and I'll just push this back together. Okay, so this is going to get in the way, so that's no good. Let me put this back in sort of tuck it away there. I should probably remove the ribbon cable, but it's got a good amount of slack. They really did a good job with the repairability of this. All right, so pushed in over the tabs, and now we will ground this guy. So this will make sure that it is no longer floating, and that it is isolated, or no longer isolated from ground, I should say. And I know it's taking a while, I just want to prove that there's no weirdness going on. This is live, so to speak, except for me dubbing the audio over it. Okay, I'll plug that back in, flip it over once more, whoop, Wi-Fi chip's coming out. Again, I think it's bad that Wi-Fi chip's next to the sound. Anyway, it's going to click record. And we'll turn this back on. I'm not sure if it's going to come across on the video or not, uh, so I'll have the raw wave files in the description for you to download and listen to yourself. Um, but to me, it definitely sounds like there is an improvement when you completely isolate the ground from this board, um, which could mean that there is some sort of ground loop, as they're saying, that's going on. I I'm a little bit surprised. I assumed it was just noise being picked up by the 
the long length of the cable. But then again, I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, maybe someone with a better electrical engineering background can answer the exact reasoning as to why this seems to improve it. Um, I'm just going to interrupt myself with the Wikipedia article on ground loops uh, to show some of the basic solutions, the more well-documented solutions. I shouldn't say basic. Um, the one we're doing here is the second bullet ground lifting. It is the simplest solution and leaves ground currents to flow through the other arm of the loop. Um, some components have ground lifting switches. Obviously, we don't. We are breaking the shield conductor. Um, the problem, as I said, with this solution is that if the other ground path to the component is removed, it will leave the component ungrounded and stray leakage currents may cause loud hum. I don't know if you're going to get that with the little headphones, possibly damaging the speakers. I think you're, you may get static in there as well. I don't know. Um, another solution they have, put a small resistor about 10 ohms into the shield conductor on the load end. I'm not sure how you could fit that in. That might be an option. Maybe someone can figure out a way to do that, if you could fit a small resistor. Um, da -da -da, an isolation transformer, that's a bit much for this. Um, I think ferrite bead choke, classic. You've probably seen those in like USB cables. That could actually work uh, because this is a high frequency radio or digital noise. It's definitely not something lower like 60 hertz. This is very much so like clock cycles from another digital component on the board. A um, couple of other ones, but either way, I just wanted to inject that little bit of Wikipedia knowledge to sort of clarify this a bit. Uh, it would also be nice if they made the digital components actually up here, but I don't know if that's even possible for the number of wires that would probably be needed to be run back, just to isolate it completely from the main motherboard, so to speak. Either way, what I've done as a fix, a temporary solution, is I have put Kafton tape on the bottom, and it pains me to say it, but I'm not even gonna use the screws. I am just going to lightly double-sided tape the bottom edge here, and the little stabilizing pins right there will help hold it in place, and that sh should be good. Um, that being said, what should be the next step, like the proper next step for us? I don't really think this is a good idea. Like I said in the beginning, when you remove a ground shielding, it, I mean, it can be a safety issue. This is pretty low power, so it's not really much of a safety issue, but more that maybe static or something could damage components inside, especially with earbuds. I've had it where static can travel back, so that wouldn't be grounded properly and could cause damage to other components. It's not usually a great idea to remove the ground shielding, so I don't think this is a proper solution. Um, I think that if you haven't already, reach out to the Steam support. Um, Valve should come up with a real solution. Again, maybe they'll have to make another revision. This is revision B, who knows, of this board. Um, but reach out to them. The dilemma I have is that if they do offer you an RMA, as of making this video, I don't believe they've actually made a fix, a hardware fix, or found the root cause of this. So you'll just be kind of sending in your machine for another machine of the same design, um, <clears throat> which could end up having the same issue again. That's the dilemma as of right now. Um, I think that Valve should make a public announcement saying that they're looking into it, or if they do, they should say what their solution is and what they're doing to solve this. Um, but either way, m reach out to support because they will not acknowledge this unless we all sort of reach out and let them know that this is a genuine issue that they should be resolved. Um, especially considering that the old one didn't have this issue. Anyways, you're on my channel, so this is what we're doing. We're putting capped on tape on it. I thought long and hard about nylon screws, um, putting those in there. You can't get nylon screws. I guess the precision is too too small of a tolerance for nylon. Um, you can't buy nylon screws with an M1.6. That's the size of these screws here, I believe, One M1.6, metric 1.6. So you can't buy nylon non-conductive screws in that size. So I'm just going to keep the screws in a Ziploc bag on hand, and I'm just going to double-sided tape that down uh, with the capton tape on the bottom. I don't think that simply putting capton tape around the screws is enough. 
uh, to completely isolate it from ground, you got to do the bottom and just stick it on and not even use the screws and let the little stabilizers have it. I don't recommend doing it at all, to be honest. I would just reach out to Valve and let them know that this is their problem. Anyways, I hope you found that interesting. I'll see you next time.